Hi and welcome to our next video of our slow circumnavigation of the UK where we leave Gosport and the Solent sneaking out round Hurst Castle and across to Studland Bay where we leave Studland Bay early to catch the tide round St Albans Head and we visit Lulworth Cove and Durdle Door just to take a look-see and then we go and help our friends see some koi carp and also check out the Olympic Village in Portland we pop back to the marina and uh, check out some oyster yachts that are in the marina there before we leave at the Cracker Sparrows to make the tide gate with us uh, heading around the Bill of Portland. So this is Hurst Castle at the west end of the Solent and we're just exiting here at, uh, at uh, slack tide. This is the Needles, we decided not to go through the Needles channel uh, as it wasn't really in the direction we wanted to head and uh, there was a fair chance of foul tide later in the day that it got in that direction. Harry and his wife apparently. He was a bit of a boy in the local area I think so I'm not sure if he'd give the uh, the Her Majesty's um, customs people a bit of a run for their money so this is Studland Bay, Bay that we we're anchored in here. Seems to be a nice anchorage here, a lot of boats in here. Not very deep but it uh, doesn't really need to be, it's quite sheltered. So I'm pointed into the wind direction so that's southeast. So that would be east over here and then south would be down here. So old Harry and his wife kind of protect us from uh, the worst of the, of the wind and the uh, tide and, and waves. Studland, we spent a the night there. Very nice, a little bit rolly. But uh, yeah, good anchorage on, on passage. A lot of yachts in there. And then this is the old man and his wife. And that's, and that's Swanwick uh, Bay, I believe, over there in the distance. Yeah, Good anchorage, apparently. Dawn just coming up. We're beating the sunrise today. There's Harry, which is the inside stack, and then his wife is the little one on the outside, I think. Apparently, he gave the French a bit of a hard time and uh, the local customs guys. So this is Dilston Head, so we're about two miles off that, and then that's St Albans Head which we're going to go a bit further offshore to miss uh, the tidal race that's around here. So this is the entrance into Lulworth Cove from the, uh, the east side coming in here. It's basically the pale area is the entrance. It's quite hard to pick out along the coast but once we look at the charts and have a look at where you are, it's pretty easy to see, there's a few crab pots around. And then we're going to go up to Durdle Door after that to see the arch there. Quite a spectacular coastline, lots of rocky bits and headlands. This is us coming up to Lulworth Cove, which I've heard a lot about. We're going to go in and have a look around and hopefully come back next year and stay the night. We're just about at the top of the tide as well, so it should make it pretty easy to get in and out. Looking along the coast, there is Durdle Door, which Paul's never heard of. So we're going to go and have a look as we go past. So we've got a lovely old wooden boat just, to, but just coming in to have a look as well. Superbly varnished. So now we're coming in, there's horses up on top of the hill. It's just really spectacular. It sort of opens up as you walk as you go in. Walk in. No, we're sailing in Mary. And you can see over the corner there, there's the pub and things. Um, apparently it's only open from eight in the morning till half ten at night, and you're not allowed to stay overnight at all. Not camping or with caravans or anything. 
There must be some fantastic walks around here. Just looks so inviting. Might not look quite so nice on a drizzly day, but it's still pretty spectacular. We are on high tide, so we should have plenty of water in here, but we weren't too um, keen on going in too tight in case we suddenly run aground or there's a nice big rock out somewhere underneath. But I can't wait to come back and stay the night and hopefully not be in here when it's too packed. But we are so spoilt with our countryside. These lovely places, vistas to come and look at. This is us just about doing a three, started to do a 360 as we go right round. So in the far distance you can see a nice old double master going past. I go further down the coast. And that should be Dirtle Door over there. Just where I'm pointing my finger. It's difficult to make it out from here, but you'll see it when we get closer. A lot of cracks above it. All big white cliffs. There's a couple of cracks in the top of that arch. as well to go and explore but next year hopefully we'll be coming back this is the view back along the we call the Jurassic coast nice sail along the coast close in there today it was nice so this is the entrance into Portland Harbour it's the uh, north entrance which is recommended for all uh, small traffic small uh, sailing vessels and other traffic so we're uh, heading in here. We're not sure whether we're going to get a berth or not, but we'll uh, call them when we get inside and see what happens. This is Weymouth off to starboard. 
there is a harbour there and a, a marina in the back of the uh, harbour beyond the bridge. So preferences for Portland here. And that's the uh, eastern entrance they call it. There is actually an, an, a southern entrance but it's blocked by a sunken vessel sunk during the water stop submarines getting in there. Some training, some skiff training going on here. Not sure if it's the Sea Cadets, looks like it might be. So this is the entrance to the marina at Portland. Uh, it seems pretty straightforward. The channel across the harbour is quite well marked. And uh, this is the way you go into the marina. So it seems as though they're pretty full, but we'll see how we get on. We have been allocated at birth, so that's a, that's a step forward. It's a huge harbour, massive harbour. Uh, it's a big one to meet on the way out. Luckily, he's spotted us and is turning, so it's port to port. South African, I think. Georgetown? Yeah. Or is that that's Caribbean, isn't it? Georgetown. Yeah. It's getting into here. You could, you'd have to go starboard side too, I'd have to rearrange the fenders. Oh, there's plenty of room. Got this right, that's probably your best bet is to get in there. These are the facilities that we use during the Olympics and it's great to see they're still actively in use. There's lots of shouting and laughing and joking going on over there. We've got to fill the water up. So that's us wash the, wash the boat down. Have all the salt that they've got in the passages. And uh, we're ready to fill the water tank up as well. The decks are in great condition. Been washed and obviously cleaned down of all the salt. But Mary's been treating them with Semco, and it seems to be a very good product, I have to say. It's kept them in good condition. So, we went off to stay with friends for a couple of days and I uh, had a look at their fish tank, they've just moved into this house, it's very green the fish tank, the koi carp, you can barely see them in the tank. So we helped uh, put together some new filters and hopefully we get the water cleared. And after a couple more weeks and a bit more filter work, this is the result. What a difference. Oh, you can see right at the bottom, can't you now? And these are two vessels we've seen before. They're long-range training vessels, uh, blue, uh, blue water trainers. Into the pontoon, got two fenders out. Just come for a wander to drop some rubbish off. There's a little bit of a fetch on this boat from where the sailing academy is. Um, there's, there's enough fetch to, to pick up a little bit of wave action and obviously the pressure from the wind has pushed on to the key. This is the main pontoon that we're on out for visitors, it's the end pontoon. And the marina offices are over there with, uh, and there's a staffing system for motorboats and speedboats and things. Ropes. Plenty of facilities here for the yachtsman and boater, as you'd expect from an Olympic harbour. Um, two ship lifts. They've got a couple of ramps there, they've got, uh, uh, they've got a stacker system for forklifting ribs and things out and then stacking them later in the building at the back. So yeah, plenty of space here. It does indeed pivot, I think. So it pivots around the bottom of the what looks like an airfoil wing. So you have your foresail to the right-hand side of it and the mainsail behind it. And the whole thing pivots and uh, they're apparently quite an efficient uh, sailing system. There's a lot of equipment with them and you've got this very unusual tapered mast as well. 
This is on a catamaran. At the centre of the marine, you can see Portland Bill, you now the back side of it. We'll go around that tonight on the other side. So a lot of dive boats here. There's a scimitar and uh, skin re deeper or something, skin reaper. Um, they're all dive boats, so they're all geared up here. So this, this is actually a shower system for divers. So when they come ashore, you can wash your wetsuits and things down while you've still got them on and off you go. The other facility here was used for production of uh, torpedoes and uh, right from some smiles. So where are we, Mary? These are the Olympic rings. Olympic rings at Portland Harbour. Yeah, so it was used for the Olympics, the UK Olympics. Yeah, quite a big uh, facility here. So there's obviously some regatta meeting going on today. Uh, I think it's lasers, ILCA. And there seems to be lots of um, preparation work going on. I don't know whether it's racing at the moment or they just practice. Probably practice for the weekend. So this is the facilities where they could launch dinghies and little cranes for other boats during the Olympics. And lots of dinghy uh, pontoons and uh, for ribs and things like that. And then the main yacht marine is beyond that. And you can see, you can see Akitas over there in the background. Is over there somewhere. Uh, I think it's that one there. Um, yeah, so nice marina. But as you can see, there's a fair fetch from this side. By the time it gets over to us, it's um, it's quite bouncy uh, with a sort of 20 knots of wind blowing. There's plenty of activity here. Windsurfers and kiteboarders are further out there. work going on for the regatta. All the lasers that are in the regatta are lined up here. And that's the Weymouth and Portland National Sailing Academy. So that's the uh, legacy of the Olympics. So this is one of the stacker forklifts that they use to uh, lift the boats up into the storage up here. I don't know whether I'd want my boat stacked quite as high as that. Can't do any maintenance on it, that's for sure. This is a Lynx helicopter that uh, served with the Royal Navy and the association with Portland is through HMS Osprey which is the Royal Naval Air Station here at Portland. Serenity here, an oyster. It's a five, and five or something. She is. We saw her in Studland Bay. Oyster, I'm pretty sure. Slightly newer than ours. So this is an oyster 49. I think it's slightly, certainly newer than ours. Slightly different layout, so we're just checking it out. Very similar to Stern. Fair leads are different. Ah, there you go, see? Change the fair leads because they keep breaking on ours. And uh, teak rail, it's different. And it's got seats at the back here, I think. Oh no, covers over the double windows in above the after stateroom. Big lazarette, same as ours. And the cockpit's slightly different shapes, more curved, I think, at the back. Uh, window system looks similar. Rig looks very similar. I think he's got electric furling in that. It doesn't look like it's uh, manual, electro manual. And uh, the Durards have got little frames over them, but they're in a slightly different position. Not that different. The design has developed, I think. Seems like it needs a bit of work on the decks.
hope you enjoyed the video follow us uh, the next time as we pass the bill of portland we across lime bay and head into exmouth with a strong current which makes mooring difficult but it's a lovely harbour and a brilliant taxi service uh, we check out pirates cove and uh, the maximum range of our e-scooters on a trip up to topsham before leaving in a blizzard of racing rs200 dinghies and we head for Torquay and a Vivid Light Show. So like, subscribe and share. And don't forget to click the bell button to see the next episode. Bye. 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 Click the bell button. Bye. You, now you've ruined that one. Bell button. <laughs> bell button. Is the that bell. what I said? The bell button. No, you didn't say the bell. What click did I say? Bell. Click the bell. Is that what I said? No, you said click the button. Well, we'll have to run again then, won't we? So, hope you enjoyed. Are you going to stop much?